this gospel passage we just heard is, is I'm sure, familiar to all of us. It uh, really doesn't matter which of the synoptic gospel accounts that, that uh, we have in front of us. It's pretty much the, the same message, that Jesus uh, provides this great miracle of the multiplication of loaves and fish. Um, uh, I just uh, got a, a text from one of our uh, couples in our parish who are over in the Holy Land right now. Um, I was supposed to be with them, but uh, had a little change of plans. Uh, but they were uh, in the Galilee region. And uh, I haven't found out, I, I will find out later today, hopefully, uh, if they actually got to celebrate uh, at the Mount of Beatitudes, um, where uh, this, uh, this miracle more than likely took place. I'm hoping that uh, they lined that up so that they could have Mass there, uh, right, where this, right where this great miracle happened. Um, so it, it's familiar to all of us, so I uh, just want to fill you in on, on what my prayer led me to this week when I was, when I was thinking about this uh, passage. Uh, I found myself as uh, one of the, the people in, in the crowd that was reclining. And, um, and what I, I saw around me uh, is, is the people, uh, after hearing Jesus, it was, it was apparent to me that, that after he had been preaching, that then they were led to be generous with what they had received. So in other words, uh, it, what, what led to having 12 wicker baskets full of, of fragments left over, of that being able to be collected, because the, the people weren't stuffing their pockets. They weren't hoarding to themselves the gifts that they had received. And it was because of that relationship with Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, that they were generous. After they had received their fill, they're willing to give back. They're willing to put it back in the basket so that it wouldn't be wasted. I think that's a, a very important lesson for all of us to pray with. All of the gifts that we receive, <laughs> think about this, we, we, we live in a society that tends to try to get us to believe that the one who dies with the most toys wins, right? But that's not the case, right? We are called to be generous with all the blessings that we receive. Uh, Last night, I had a, a, a very recent uh, example of generosity uh, put on display for me. It was actually in the sacristy right before Mass last night, 5 o'clock Mass here. And uh, the lector was Mike Bojanski. Um, those of you that know our parishioner Mike, uh, you know that, uh, uh, well, maybe you haven't seen him in a while because he's, he switched over to coming to the 5 o'clock uh, Mass. But uh, he had kind of the same idea that I had uh, during COVID, that he was going to go ahead and let his hair grow out. And so if you haven't seen Mike in a while, just imagine me last December, okay? Uh, it's actually, it's even a little bit longer than that now. So uh, he, uh, he had his hair back in a ponytail last night. And so he says to me in sacristy, he goes, so, uh, you uh, you're starting to lose any hair? And I said, well, no, it's actually, uh, they told me it's probably going to be after this next treatment. Uh, it might start uh, falling out. So my next treatment is this Wednesday. And so he said, well, he goes, you know, hope this isn't offensive to you at all. I was like, oh, please, let me have it. So he says, I just want to let you know, I have some to share. Like, oh, that's so special. But the generosity of Mike coaching, right? <laughs> uh, but one of the things that came to me in my prayer uh, 
that was really instilled in me about this message of this gospel uh, goes back to when I was on the reservations. Uh, both the Winnebago and the Omaha people, uh, when, they're, when they have a death in the community, they have four days of wake. So they have four days in which the community comes together to mourn the loss uh, of, of the, the deceased. And throughout those four days, each tribe, they have people that go into, uh, they have a, basically a kitchen team, a group of, of women who prepare four meals a day. Four meals that are provided for the mourners. And what was really interesting to me, uh, growing up in a big family, uh, growing up with a mother who was very, very crafty and thrifty in pro providing meals, meal after meal after meal for a big family. Um, you know, I fully expected that after one of these lunches, right, where we had kind of a, whatever you want to call it, a loose meat, or if you want to call it a sloppy joe, or if you want to call it a tavern. By the way, it, there are so many names for that one article of food, isn't there? Right? Depending on where you come from. Anyway, I digress. After, after that meal, I thought for sure the big pot of loose meat, sloppy joe, whatever you want to call it, would be taken back and repurposed. None of the food is repurposed during those four days. When it's prayed over, it's then given out. So all of the people that are there get to take containers of food home with them. Nothing is held back. Just like our gospel today. All that was extra, all that was beyond what the people needed at that time, was given back so that good things could be done with it. I think that's something for all of us to continue to, to pray about, right? What we have been given, we are called to be good stewards of, but also to be very generous with giving back. And so let us pray. Let us pray about those things in our lives that, that we want to hold on to. What we want, we have kind of a uh, maybe a, a, an attachment to that the Lord is saying, go ahead and lighten your grip on that. Go ahead and, and allow the generosity to flow. But recognize also that it, that comes after being in that relationship with Jesus. Right? The more we listen to His Word, the more we will respond in kind.